since you are not there, yeah. do you find this regular or irregular? To give an unsecured loan of savers' money to a company like Uganda Clays that was making losses for three financial years. The select committee chaired by Mbara South Division legislator Muine Mpaka grilled the management of NSSF on how they dispersed an unsecured loan of 20 billion shillings to Uganda Clays in 2010 when the company was struggling for three financial years and dipped in grave losses. However, 13 years later, Uganda Clays has not paid back the 20 billion shillings, which was dished out at 15% interest rate per year. When you look at their financial statement for 20, 20, actually it's 20, 2008, 2009, 2010, they were making losses. So how did you get savers money and invest it in a loss-making company? The company borrowed money in order to expand. Their product was required in the market and they felt that they needed to expand uh, their production. So at the time, management of Uganda Clays sought to set up a new factory in Mbale. Good idea, but badly executed. So the money they borrowed from us was not sufficient to put the, the, the factory that they had wanted to set up uh, in the right place. Does the Savers Fund and the Commercial Bank operate the same? That's this is a loan, not an investment. You mean the fund has reached a level of now behaving like standard charter than any other commercial bank? Legislators were quick to point fingers to the then audit manager of Uganda Clays, Richard Biarugaba, who was later appointed managing director NSSF, alluding to possible influence peddling. We were appointed on the MBA, you go and check, but we have the appointment letter. You were appointed on the board of Uganda Clays on 29th October 2010. On 29th December 2010, after you had been appointed on the board of Uganda Clays, you now gave them this 20 billion loan. So there's no way you can say I was appointed to supervise, yet your appointment at Uganda Clays was before they even got the loan from NSSF. My recollection is that the loan was made before I even joined the fund. It's only that we disbursed after I had joined the fund. The approval by the board of NSSF happened before my career. Okay. Point us in the right direction. Who here approved the loan? Committee members claimed that the controversial loan was later written off, but we are Gaba refuted claims, saying the new payment plan had been put in place after NSSF took over management of Uganda Clays Limited. There was a risk evaluation of this loan before it was disbursed to Uganda Clays. Was there a risk evaluation? No, it wasn't written off. It is fully provided for. That means that you've got the asset sitting on your books and you've got the liability out of your profit and loss sitting on the other side. So in the books uh, of the fund, it might show like it is zero, but it is actually uh, fully provided. The committee also queried NSSF management on two board members from National Organization of Trade Unions, NOTU, and Employers Federation board who were asked to resign from NSSF board and were compensated exorbitant sums of 700 million shillings. Under what legal framework did you pay after people have resigned from the board? Our understanding is that these board members are paid for the period they are serving on the board. But if they have resigned and then you compute what they should have earned for the entire period of the term of the board, under what legal framework did you do this, regardless of how much? These are minutes of uh, um, held on, on uh, 21st January 2022. You computed their money, their exit package, based on the following. The board emoluments and the average investee company's tabulation. Should I assume even when someone is leaving, you look at the assets, what do you mean by investee company's tabulation? Each one was paid 312 million shillings. 
312. Total is 700. Yeah, um, that is around 624 million shillings. 624 million. I will be happy to provide the detail after the meeting, Mr. Chairman. Today, the NSSF management admitted that the savers are at the risk of losing out four plots of land in Temangalo, which have remained in the names of the original owner Amos Nzei, even when courts of law pronounced themselves on ownership. They have more than two long titles. I mean titles belonging to another individual and NSSF. Uh, that's a matter I think we are even in court with, the, with those individuals. So we know there's contention on that. Report compiled by Fred Kajubi for the news.